All right, let's take a look at the next example. And so this is problem three. So we're question 12.12 uh, 12, uh, from the textbook. And so we're told that 50 degrees C, the system acetone and chloroform forms an azeotrope with composition X1 is equal to 0 0.416. The activity coefficients are given by um, the equation below. So that's our two suffix Margulies equation again, where A is constant. And it says, what is the pressure uh, at the azeotropic composition at 50 degrees C, so the temperature we're given. And we're told uh, one mole of acetones mixed with one mole of chloroform. All right, so let's start with um, with A. Okay, so, oops, try that. so at 50 degrees C, we have this system that forms an azeotrope with composition X1 is 0 0.416. There's our activity coefficient model, and we're asked what the pressure is. Okay, so let's take inventory of, of what we have. Okay, so in A. So, um, so we have an azeotrope at x1 is equal to 0 0.416. Well, at an azeotrope, y1 is equal to x1. So we'd have that y1 is also equal to 0 0.416. Okay, so we know x1 and y1 our temperature is 50 degrees C, and we know that, um, so this is uh, vapor pressure of acetone and chloroform, acetones component one, so we know P1 sat, and we know P2 sat, okay? And so knowing that, can we solve for uh, the pressure uh, at, our, at our azeotropic composition? Well, let's find out, let's give it a try. So if I write down my uh, coexistence criteria, so I have Y1P is equal to gamma 1, X1, P1 sat. Y2P is equal to gamma 2, X2, P2 sat. All right, well, so just looking at these, taking inventory, we know Y1 and Y2, we know X1 we know X2, we know P1 sat, we know P2 sat, okay? What we don't know is P, P is what we're trying to solve for, okay? And then if we look at gamma, gamma is gonna have A in there, okay? But otherwise, I know X1 and X2. So what should happen is we would get a system of two equations with two unknowns, right? Yeah, so if I were to plug in my expressions for gamma, Okay, and then it's just a matter of, is there um, an easier way to, to solve? Um, and I would say, yes. Yeah, yeah, there is, okay? So again, what I'm trying to take inventory is, okay, so I don't know P, so P is unknown. Um, and then in terms of gamma one and gamma two, remember gamma one is gonna be the exponential of a x two squared, gamma two, is going to be equal to the exponential of a x1 squared. Okay, so looking at these, I know x1 and x2. What I don't know is a. So what I have then is a system of equations, system of two equations uh, with two unknowns. All right, the two unknowns are going to be p and a. So I could just simultaneously solve those two equations to solve for uh, p and a. Right. So when they ask for p. Well, you actually get P and A at the same time. Uh, if you wanted to try and solve this by hand sequentially, what I'm thinking the strategy is, if I were to look at this, would be, you know, can I eliminate P? And the answer is yes. So if I were to write this, divide this by uh, Y1, both sides by Y2, I can get P is equal to gamma 1, X1, P1 sat uh, over uh, Y1. P is equal to gamma 2 x2 p2 sat over y2. So then I can equate them. So I'd have the gamma 1 x1 p1 sat over y1 is equal to gamma 2 x2 p2 sat over y2. Okay? Um, and you know, the key would be you have a, a single equation with a single unknown, 
right? You could tackle that in, in any way you wanted to solve for A. And then once you had A, um, then you could go do, say, a, a bubble P calculation, or I would think that maybe the, the easier way would be just as, you know, equating this would be the same as, um, let's divide, well, no. So I could have just as equivalently taken the ratio of these two terms, all right? So rather than set an equal, just divide this by that, this left-hand side would just be one, all right, and you get that ratio. Uh, but anyway, so then once you have A, you could just go back up to, you know, one of your expressions. So say Y1P is equal to gamma1 X1 uh, P1 sat, and then you could solve for P, all right? So P is going to be equal to gamma1 X1 P1 sat over Y1, all right? So once I solve for A, then you can go and you can calculate P, okay? And so solving for A, so here I divided both sides by, you know, Y1 and then Y2 uh, and equated them since they're equal to P. You could just as well divide it, you know, this expression by that expression because the P's would have canceled and you would have Y1 over Y2 is equal to that, you know, all the same. Okay, you could work out expression for relative volatility uh, and that's equal to 1 at the easy trope and you could use that to solve. Okay, all's the same. Okay, and then B, one mole of acetone is mixed with one mole of chloroform at 50 degrees C and 0.5 bar. What is the phase of the pure components before mixing? What is the phase of the pure components after mixing? Well, if I think about pure components, so if I have acetone at 50 degrees C and 5 bars, okay, and chloroform at 50 degrees C and 5 bars, well, pure component vapor pressure of acetone at 50 degrees C is 0.81 bars. So that would be P is less than uh, P1 sat. And so acetone then would be a, a vapor. If I were to look at chloroform, there P is greater than um, P2 sat. And so chloroform, I would have um, a liquid. So chloroform would be a liquid, acetone would be a vapor that I'd mix together. So in order to know what phase my mixture is at this temperature and that pressure, I would need to do a bubble P and do P calculation and see where I fall in relationship on that PXY, okay? And so, you know, the idea for B then, okay, is, you know, this is an azeotropic system. This is not an ideal system, okay? But regardless, to try and feel myself or feel my way through the problem, I'm going to draw a PXY phase diagram for an idealized system just so I can remind myself what I have. So for an ideal system plotted with respect to the most volatile component, right, here's my PXY. Okay, so this would be P1 sat. This would be P2 sat. So when I looked at the pure component limits, you know, it was a matter of looking at, you know, a pure. This is liquid, high pressures are liquid, low pressures are vapor. In between here, I have two phase, okay? So even looking at the pure component limits is a matter of if my pressure is greater than, you know, my vapor, pure component vapor pressure, I have liquid. If my pressure is less than my pure component vapor pressure, I have vapor, right? You can do that for both sides. For this mixture, okay, and we know it's equimolar, I'm mixing one mole of acetone with one mole of, um, uh, what do you call it, um, chloroform, all right, so I know Z1, okay, it's going to be equimolar of both components, so my mixture is going to be equimolar. So what I'm going to need to do is, for this mixture of Z1, calculate P bubs and calculate P do. And then I'm going to have to compare P to P bubs and P do, because if I'm in between P bubs and P do, I'm two phase. If my pressure is greater than P bubs, I have a liquid. If my pressure is lower than P do, I have a vapor. Okay, and so this is just like what we've done for our Reynolds law problems. The only difference now is we're going to use modified Reynolds law. Okay, so my uh, phase coexistence criteria is going to be Y1P. It's equal to gamma 1 X1 P1 sat. Y2P is equal to gamma 2 X2 P2 sat. Okay. So in terms of getting P bubs, the key is at my bubble point, 
x1 is just equal to z1, right? So if I were to draw my ISO uh, bar at the bubble point, x1 is just equal to z1. So I know x1, but I don't know y1. So our trick was we add these two equations together. And so I get p, in this case it's p bubs, is equal to gamma1 x1 uh, p1 sat plus gamma2 x2 p2 sat, okay? Where x1 is equal to z1, x2 is equal to z2, right? And which would just be 0.5 in this case. And so gamma 1 and gamma 2, since I know A, right? I found A in, in part A, and I know uh, my composition, right? Liquid composition would just be equal to Z, right? I have that, I can calculate P. I can calculate P bubs. P do, remember the trick there was at my do point, okay? Now it's Y. Okay, my vapor composition is equal to the composition of my mixture. So our goal in our p do calculation was to get rid of x. And so how I do that is, um, we do it a number of ways. Uh, one would be, I'm going to rewrite this as y1p over gamma 1p1 one sat is equal to x1, y2p over gamma 2p2 two two sat equal to x2, okay, I add those two equations together, okay, and I can factor out p if I want, I get p times y1 over gamma1 p1 sat plus y2 over gamma2 p2 sat, x1 plus x2 is equal to 1, so finally p would just be equal to the inverse of this. Oh, hang on a second. Let me make sure. I'm going to have. Uh, ooh, hang on. I take it back. How do I get P do? P do. So, P do. So, if I do my P do calculation like this, it's not quite going to work. I'm going to have an, I'm going to have a slight issue. How I end up with a slight issue is that um, gamma one is also a function of x, okay? But that's okay, let me rewind here, okay? Do, do, do. I'm rewinding, and in my rewinding, it's just a matter of I can't do a simple p-do calculation like that, okay? And so all I'll do is if I just write down my criteria phase coexistence, Okay, so again, I know P1 sat, P2 sat. Okay, on the uh, left-hand side, I know Y1 and Y2, because Y1 is just equal to Z1, Y2 would just be equal to Z2, which would be 0.5, okay? So I'm left with uh, two equations with two unknowns, essentially, right? So gamma one and gamma two, since I know A, they're only functions of, of X1 or X2, right? But X2 is just one minus X1, so essentially, you know, I have two equations with two unknowns, P and X1, okay? If you wanted to, you could write a third equation, which is X2 is one minus X1, right? And you could say I have a system of three equations with three unknowns, where my three unknowns are gonna be P, um, X1, and X2, all right? Because gamma one and gamma two, you know, gamma one is just uh, exponential of A, X2 squared. Gamma two is uh, exponential of A, X1 squared. All right, so I have three equations with three unknowns that I have to use then to simultaneously solve for P, which would give me P do, and then I would also get uh, X, which actually wouldn't even matter um, in this case. Okay, so I get P bubs, I get P do. Then once I have P dubs, P bubs, and P do, I compare my uh, pressure of my system relative to P bubs and P do to determine what phase I have. Cool.